Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,249. If you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,249, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a great video here. We're going to learn how to build a database, and then above our database have a dropdown so we can pick any particular invoice and instantly get some of the information from our database, amount owed, amount paid, and balance and we will use formulas and the Excel table feature. Now, in this video, we're going to learn a lot of things. We're going to see how to build an invoice database with Excel 2016 table feature, which has a lot of amazing benefits. We'll learn how the Excel table feature will automatically carry formatting and formulas to new records. So for example, in this column we have currency, this one we have percentage. This one we have wrap text. As we add new records below our database, that will automatically be carried down. Not only that, but our formulas for amount owed and balance will automatically populate as we add new records. We'll also learn how to use what's called table formula nomenclature or structured references for Excel table formulas. So when we have an Excel table, the best advantage is that it has dynamic ranges. So any formulas or data validation dropdown that's pointing to our table will automatically update when we add new records or delete them. But that means in many cases we're going to have to use a special kind of formula called table formula nomenclatures or structured references references, which only happens in an Excel table. We will absolutely see the power of dynamic ranges for Excel tables. And then finally, our formula will use VLOOKUP and MATCH to look up invoice details. Now let's go over to the sheet 1249. Now the very first thing is, if we're going to build a database, we have to have a proper database. And that means three things. You have to have your field names or column headers in the first row. Field names is the database term. Column headers is what Excel table feature tends to call them. But in the first row, you have to have a smart name at the top of each column that says what goes in that column. Then the second thing about a proper database, you have to have records in rows. So for us, it's going to be a transaction. And the third thing is you have to have empty cells all the way around your table, except if you're directly next to Excel row headers or column headers. But all the way around, you cannot have extra data touching the table. You can have data in the next cell over, but just not directly touching the table. And finally, if I say empty cells below, if this is going to be expanding way down, you better have nothing below this table. Now, the very first thing is, the field names here sometimes can be misinterpreted by the database Excel table feature. And let me show you an example. This is product description, and then here's our description down here. Let's just pretend for a second that this was our database. I'm going to highlight just this, and we convert it to Excel's database called the table feature by clicking this table on the Insert menu, or we Control-T. Now notice what happens. My table has headers. It's not checked, because it can't tell the difference between that text. Now we could check this here, but I always like to be careful about this. In essence, what's happening is the table feature can't distinguish between that text as a field name or column header and this text as product description. So I always follow this rule. And this rule has been around way before the table feature even was around, back with sorting and filtering. You had to have some formatting with your field names for those features to distinguish. So I'm just going to add bold with Control B. Field names at the top with some formatting to distinguish it between the data below. Now, our next goal is to add whatever kind of formatting we want to numbers, tax rates, and our formulas before we convert it to an Excel table. So we're going to start with the date column. I'm going to highlight the two dates. And by the way, we could have started this table with a single record. I did it with two. So I'm going to highlight both of these, Control-1 to open up format cells. 
I'm not going to use date. I'm going to go down to custom because I want to build a custom number formatting for date. M is for month, D is for day, Y is for year. So I'm going to highlight that and watch this. When I type a D, D says, hey, even though there's a serial number down there for date, just show the day. But I'm going to use three Ds and that will show us an abbreviation for the day comma, space, and then MM. Now, MM and M will show 12 because 1 and 2 are required to know that that's December. If I had a single M and it was 1, then it would show 0, 1, a leading 0. So I'm going to have leading 0 for months, slash, leading zeros for day, slash, and then I need at least 1, 2, 3 Ys to show the full year, which is what I want. That's my custom number formatting. Click OK. So in the database, as I add new records, that'll automatically be carried down. Now product description, I definitely want to wrap this text. So over on home, wrap text. Now for full price, and now I want to highlight shipping amount owed and amount paid. So I'm going to hold the Control key and then click and drag. That allows me to highlight cells not next to each other. Control 1, and I'm going to choose currency. Decimals 2, symbol, yes. And I definitely want this negative number as a minus sign. By the way, there's a keyboard Control Shift 4 for currency, but it always puts the red parentheses for minuses, and I didn't want that here, so I'm clicking OK using that dialog box currency. Now I can highlight tax rate and discount, which I want to show as percentage with three decimals, Control-1, percentage, three decimals. Whoops, one, two, three, and click OK. Now let's go create our formula for amount owed. Now amount owed, we have a full price. We're going to have to subtract the discount, then calculate the tax, then add the shipping. So check this out. We're not only going to do all that, but we're also using the ever important round function. If I want exact pennies in my database, not a bunch of unrounded decimals, I have to use the round function. Now in the number argument, I'm going to put my entire formula and then comma, I'll put two to tell round to round to the penny. So you're ready, number, well I need the full price. And I don't want 100% of that. I want 99% because for this transaction, there's a 1% discount. Times, open parentheses, 1 minus whatever the discount is. Now notice these are cell references, right? These are relative cell references. So as I copy down, they'll always move to the new data in the particular transaction. All right, so I'm going to close parentheses. Full price times 1 minus the discount. But wait a second, now I have a tax rate. I'm going to use the same trick, times in parentheses. Well, I'm not subtracting when I add tax. For every $1, I'm adding 9.95 pennies. So that will work, close parentheses. Now I need to add the shipping. And that little bit right there is the whole calculation for our amount owed. Very carefully with my I beam cursor, I'm going to click at the end. Comma, 2 tells round to round to the penny. Close parentheses. By the way, when you have a bunch of decimals like this and you're multiplying and dividing, you're definitely going to eventually get some unrounded decimals, partial pennies. And so using round is important. Control Enter. Copy it down. And I'm going to click in the last cell and hit F2 to verify that all my cell references are working. Now, the, I mentioned earlier those are cell references, relative cell references. Those will work in our Excel table feature. We don't have to use the table formula nomenclature. We will create a second column formula after we convert this to a table, and we'll see how table formula nomenclature works. So the, the rule of thumb is you can use regular cell references or table formula nomenclature, which we'll learn later. Now, I'm actually going to add some cell formatting to this. I'm going to add a fill of green because I want to make sure that I'm never confused. That's a calculated formula. So I'm formatting it with fill to differentiate it from the typed in data. I'm also going to add the border. Now this is formatting. When I 
convert this to a Excel table database, a, a formatting for the database will appear, but this will also appear. Now I have my two records, my field names, all of the formatting and the formulas. So now I convert it to the Excel table feature, which is our database in Excel. Click in any one cell in the database. Insert table or Control T. Now notice it had no problem whatsoever with headers here. And by the way, if you don't have that bold, it'll still work. You just got to make sure to check it. I just have that habit from way back of differentiating field names so there will be no confusion. When I click OK, there is my database in Excel, the Excel table feature. Now it does a bunch of things. It has some formatting there, including different fill for each row, which definitely helps when you have a big database to pick out the right bits of information for each one of the fields. It's got drop downs, sorting, different filters depending on the data type. Notice that's a date filter. If I come over to a text column, there's text filters. There's, of course, the check boxes. Over here for numbers, there's a bunch of amazing number filters. We're actually not going to filter or sort in this particular video, but that's a great feature. We'll also get the advantages of dynamic ranges and all the formatting carrying forward. Now, we actually forgot a column over here. And I did that on purpose because the table feature is great. Not only will it expand when we add new records, but if I come over here and type the new field balance, as soon as I hit Enter, boom, that new field is incorporated into the database. Now, before we create our formula here using table formula nomenclature, we always want to make sure that our table has a proper name. Up here, there's design, table tools. Over here in properties, I'm going to give it a good name. And I'm going to call this, I click in there, and I'm going to call this PO, PO transaction table, and Enter. Now we can see that up there. That's very important because when we start making formulas later, that table name is very helpful because it'll show up in our formulas. Now let's create our first calculated column here when the table feature is turned on. Now our formula is going to need to take amount owed and subtract amount paid. So I'm simply going to type an equal sign, and they need a relative cell reference. But watch, when I click in this cell, we're going to see our first glimpse of table formula and nomenclature. Those are square brackets with an at symbol around the field name. Now, the square brackets around field name should be familiar if you've used Access, or if you've used this table feature before, or you've used Power Pivot and Add In in Excel. But what it means is, Square brackets around field names, that's always going to happen for the field name. If it's a relative cell reference, you'll have the at symbol. Now, we don't need the table name here because we're inside the table. Later, we'll have the table name when we're building our formulas above. But really, what this means, relative cell reference, it says always get amount owed for this particular transaction or record. Now, I'm going to subtract and get amount paid. At symbol means relative cell reference. Amount paid in square brackets means that field. So now we have amount owed minus amount paid for this transaction. And watch this. When I hit Enter, it auto-populates down the column. Now, you could turn that off if you want with undo calculated column or stop automatically creating calculated columns. But we don't want that. We want the same formula inside the entire column. So it's very convenient. Here, it's only two cells. But imagine if you had 10,000 records, boom, automatically copied down. Now we need to add our formatting because this is a formula. I'm going to go up and get fill and our borders. Now we can test our database. We're going to add a new record. And there's two ways to add new records. The first way is simply click in the cell directly below the last record and start typing. Now I'm going to type 1 slash 2. And since I am in the year 2016 and I want 2016, that's all I have to type. The month 1, the day 2, as soon as I hit tab, 
it'll do two things. It'll carry that number formatting forward, and it will create the new record. So watch this. Tab. Boom. There's the number formatting carried forward, including 2016. And there is our new record. There's our formulas already being copied down. Now we're going to type the PO91. I typed, and now I hit Tab. Now we're going to type the invoice number, tab, model number, typing, and hitting tab. Now the description, tab, the price, tab, 0.95, tab, zero, tab, shipping is 35.99, tab, and there is our formula. Already calculating, tab and amount paid is zero, tab. Now, we've entered our first new record since the cursor's in the last cell in the last record. When I hit Tab, it'll automatically create our next record. So when I hit Tab, boom, there it is. Now I'm going to enter this full record. And now I'm in the very last cell. And instead of hitting Tab to add a new record, I'm going to hit Enter. And there I've added two new records with the formatting for custom date, wrap, text, percentage, currency, and both of our formulas automatically carrying down. Now, I didn't add my currency to this, so I'm going to highlight this in Control-1, Currency, and then select the defaults, click OK. The number formatting will also be carried forward. Now we need to build our formulas up here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to list invoice number right here. And then I'm going to list the field names, amount owed, amount paid, and balance right there. We're going to have data validation drop down list. So we just select an invoice. And then our VLOOKUP and MATCH formula to retrieve the data from our database. Now I actually want to first show you how to use table formula nomenclatures to point down to the actual field names. Now I'm going to remove this blue formatting here just for a second. Because if I show you a formula with that dark blue background, it won't work. Ready? We're going to say equals. I just want to get the invoice number. But watch what happens. That's part of the database. And we want to see table formula nomenclature here. There's the table name. PO transaction table. And then there's a square bracket and a second element. It says square bracket, pound sign, header. That means please go get something from this one part of the table called headers. Then there's a comma. And in square brackets, field name with square brackets around it. That's the table formula nomenclature or structured reference to get a field name from inside of a table. Now I'm going to hit Tab. And now I want in succession amount owed, paid, and balance. But watch what happens here. Now the same exact thing, the table name, headers, and that particular field name. But now, watch this. When I enter and copy it over, the table name and the headers remain the same. But that amount owed will move as a relative cell reference. So I'm going to Control Enter and copy it over. If I click in the last cell and hit F2, you can see, sure enough, table name, the element, headers, and balances a new in essence, relative cell references, I copied it over for our field name. All right, now I'm going to add some formatting to this. And now we need data validation drop down list. And guess what? We're going to point to this invoice number. And anytime we add new records, the actual drop down list will totally update. So we go to data, over to data tools, data validation, data validation. And here is our dialog box, the settings. Allow any value is the default. We want to click the drop down, and there's all sorts of amazing things. But we want list. We want a list of items in a drop down. It says in cell drop down. The source. And now watch this. This is not going to enter table formula nomenclature. But when I highlight it, it says please get C6 to C9 on this sheet here. When I click OK, it will work. Look at that. There's our invoices. And we'll test it in just a moment. We'll add a new record and see if that updates. Now we need to create our formula. Now what are we doing here? We have an invoice number from 123, the third column. 
Anytime we pick one of these, we need to get amount owed, paid, and balance. So we're going to use VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP. It does vertical lookup. The lookup value, that's the thing I'm looking up, comma, the table array. Now what I need for table array is the first column of invoice number all the way over to the last balance column. Now watch what happens when I highlight this. This is going to be table formula nomenclature. I'm highlighting. And VLOOKUP always has to have the actual item it's going to try and match in the first column, and then things we're going to try to retrieve from subsequent columns. But look at the table formula nomenclature. Table name, and then in square brackets, there is field name, colon, field name. That means go all the way from inside the table, the entire field invoice number, all the way to balance. The fact that there's a square bracket around the outside and a colon between our two field names means that that range is locked. When I copy this over to the side, it's as if we hit the F4 key and added dollar signs. But in table formula nomenclature, that's how you have to lock. Now, I want to type comma. And actually, let's go back over, boop, right there. I forgot to lock that. When I copy this over, boom, to amount paid and balance, I need it locked on the invoice number. Now here, this is not inside the table. So when I hit F4, that's normally how you lock a cell reference. But there, there's that table array. That's absolute reference inside an Excel table. Now, the column number. I didn't count these. This is, I think, 10, 11, 12. So I need to tell VLOOKUP in the column index that that's the column number I want to get something from and bring back to the cell. But wait a second. I don't want to type this in. So I'm going to use the match function. The match function can look up amount owed, amount paid, and balance within that whole range there and tell us the relative position. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's 8, 9, and 10. I don't want to do it manually, so I'm going to have match function do it for me. Now, match is a lookup function. We're going to tell it lookup value, relative cell reference. So as I copy this over, right, the match, the lavender cell reference will move to amount paid and balance. That's the lookup value, comma. But the lookup ray, now watch this. I'm going to highlight these are headers. So watch what happens to our table formula nomenclature or structure reference. There's the table name. Square brackets, oh yeah, it's a particular part of our table called headers. So it, that's got to be there. And then comma, there's field name, colon, field name with the square bracket on the outside. That means it's locked. So as we copy this to the side, it will not move relatively. Now I'm still in match, comma, the match type. These names are not sorted, so we have to use 0 to tell match that this is an exact match. So I'm typing a 0. Now notice our screen tip right there. As soon as I close parentheses, that screen tip will jump back to VLOOKUP which is convenient, right? We're doing functions inside of functions. Close parentheses, and boom, there is the VLOOKUP. Now, that entire column index num there is the match function. Match will simply deliver a number to column index and tell VLOOKUP which column, 8, 9, or 10. Now, I need to type, come to the end and type a comma. We still need to tell VLOOKUP that this is an exact match. This first column is not sorted, so we have to say exact match. I'm typing a 0. You can put false if you want, but 0 means false. And now that's it. If you can see the screen tip right there, I close parentheses, Control-Enter, and that is a wild table formula, nomenclature, structure, reference formula. I come to the end, hit F2, and sure enough, it's locked on the invoice number, balance moved relatively for match. Match got the proper number, delivered it to VLOOKUP, and LOOKUP looked up balance. So for this particular invoice, we owe 530.75. Now let's test it. Let's click the drop down and change it. Changing the invoice number, and boom, that it found a match there. It got our current balance and so on. Now let's test the database. Let's add a new record. I went ahead and typed out our new record. 
we could see the balance column is working there. Everything's working. But here's the moment. I want to actually look up that new invoice. So I come up to my drop down, and sure enough, there it is. Our dynamic ranges from the invoice number, even though we use regular cell references inside our data validation drop down list, worked. And so did our formula VLOOKUP, match, table formula, nomenclature to get the latest information for that invoice. All right, in this video, we saw a bunch of cool stuff how to build a database in Excel 2016 using the Excel table feature, carry the format forward, carry the formulas forward. We saw a table formula nomenclature. We saw data validation drop down list, and even an awesome VLOOKUP and match formula. All right, we'll see you next video.